his face frozen in terror. You're lying to me, Map. There's a mountain. Is that why you mean by a house? If so, rude. I'll climb this mountain if it's the last thing I do. Oh god, it might be the last thing I do. Oh no! <laughs> oh god. The game, it doesn't like it over here. Oh. Never mind, we're good. Oh, there's a road. There was a road and everything that I could have taken. Whoops. Alright. Well, guess I'll look in their trash. Hello. Just, uh, your friendly neighborhood peeping Tom. Always gotta check around the house. It's kind of my deal. Ho! Breaking another frozen person. Alright, yeah, I'll keep that picture. Interesting. A magnet? Okay. Well, can we get in the house? Yep. The air was freezing. Right down to the bone. Um, first order of business, radio. No. Right, guys? Just no. Clock is stuck at three. Can I start a fire in here? Yes! Ooh, and more logs. I'll check out the lady here in a sec. You know, I gotta look at this look at the stuff. Maybe I gotta clean some dishes or something. I don't know. You guys got any ammo? You only got like cans of fish. What the hell is happening to people? That window had seemingly been left open for a while, Carl thought. Yeah, apparently. Even the punishing weather, it couldn't have been intentional. Well, I guess I will touch Carl the lady. Carl deduced that the poor woman imprisoned in the ice was the wife of Phil Lashoff. Damn. Hold alone to this? I just deduced in my pants. Carl felt a cool tingling sensation. Okay, clock, I get it. Clock! I get it, it's three o'clock! Oh, God! What the? Something was hidden under the stairs. Gil Lachance hiding something. Okay. The man grabbed his rifle. Carl felt a sense of dread in him. I can use my flashlight in uh, ghost mode. Alright. Guess that was. Oh, hello. What you got there? Bertrand Lachance, 1948. Okay. Take a picture Perhaps of all this their stuff. Spousal relationship had been cooling down lately. Oh, sick, sick pun. That was a sick pun, yo. Hello. Ah. Uh, like I didn't turn the light on. Commonplace in this house. 
Oh my god, they got freaking stuff hidden everywhere. Man, my house doesn't even have like one secret area. Alright, well we'll come back in here, I guess. Oh. More more spookiness. You guys got a little more secret spookiness for me? The bishop's oh. veil was lifted, and he was back to reality. A reality in which Giselle, Jill's loving spouse, was motionless, frozen in ice. September. Mother told me once when I first met Giselle. Gile. Jill. Gil. Gilligan. That I hadn't picked the brightest bulb with a lot. And as the years flew by, I'm seeing the truth of her words. I always trust your mother's wisdom. That blackmailing scheme is a prime example of Gil's brightness. Gile. He's like a small dog. Thinks he's bigger than he actually is. He growls, genuinely thinking he's scary. But everyone knows he can be pushed aside with just a little kick. He truly believes he can blackmail Hamilton, the big boss himself, Metal Gear. It's going to be a long time in hell before my poor Gilead can manage to pull off such a feat. After all, Hamilton's a rich, learned, and influential man. Not only is that blackmailing idea bad to begin with, let's be honest, Gilead is, uh, is way out of his league. But Gilead doesn't know, doesn't even know how he's going to actually carry this out. I don't think he ever would. He's just throwing random threats out loud in the kitchen. He says he'll do it eventually, but I know better. Successful blackmailing requires masterful cunning. And Gile is master of nothing at all. He is a slave, and forever will be. I often look at that safe he keeps hidden at the fake wall, in which he stores all those incriminating documents he intends to use, and I just can't come to grips with the sheer ridiculousness of the whole thing. What a saucy wench. Strong odor of paint dissolver. Okay. Got uh, some pills. Pills are good. Pills are good. Unpack bathroom accessories. Oh, no need to waste. Energy, turn that light off. Looks like the holes in that puzzle are there to stay. Oh, okay. I get what you're saying. You're in an a-hole. That's what you're doing. Something? The pot was cold. And the stew inside wasn't cooked. I don't care. I'm blah, 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 blah. likely that poor Giselle was slow cooking it before she got snapped. What a waste. Oh, that's how we're calling it these days. Getting snapped. Ooh, some raw meat. Cigarettes in the fridge? What a bunch of savages. Ah, oh, moving. What a pleasant activity. Of course, you'll find the record player only to find the records weeks later in some random box. Carl had seen that kind of safe before. Uh, With its double layered security system blending letters and numbers, its code couldn't be broken by the common burglar. I figured it's got to be like this, right? That's a lot of things to put in. That can't be right. BL48? Uh, I don't even know how many letters it takes. Uh, B? Oh, you can only get one of each? That's not right. Only one letter and three numbers. Hmm. Well, that throws my theory off. Um. Bertrand. Let's see, is it do 1948? Bested me this time. 
Uh, the general store, hmm. along with several more Changed infrastructures hands. in the area, had been acquired by wealthy industrialist William J. Hamilton. Perhaps the village should be rechristened Hamilton. <laughs> oh, narrator. I do declare. So what was he painting? Many boxes scattered about. Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachauses had just moved in. Oh. It felt like old people were all these walls could see for years. Freaking Lachauses old people. could hardly be blamed for wanting to freshen things up a bit. Some major revamping work underway here. The place looked barely habitable. Who would live in this Harlequin romance novels? Oh my god. Many boxes scattered. No, above. I know. What about this? Carl didn't need to summon his detective training to quickly figure that the Lachauses had just. Look at in. this, though. Beautiful portrait of Gilles and Giselle, bound together by the chains of conventional love. Now they hate each other. When was their marriage? Doesn't say. More cigarettes. Uh, I'm gonna leave that on because it's spooky. The cross looked after a marriage's well-being and served as a motivator to uphold the priest's sermons calling for more little worshippers on one hand and cautioning against guilty pleasures on the other. Mm. Indeed, the Lachances were still part of the God-fearing generation. That clock's not stuck at three. white coating would restore the room to its charm of old days. I like some weird stuff, dude. Anything? Many boxes. No, no, but out of boxes. Oh, Carl God. didn't need to summon his detective uh, training to quickly figure no. that the Lachauses had just moved in. 30 more pictures. Well... Not too sure how this works out if this is the uh, code. Unless it's I 1948. Which I guess it could be, but I don't know. There, whoops, there is an I. It would look like 1948 when it was done, but. Now, the worst. Hmm. There isn't even an L on there, so it wouldn't be his last name. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm no common burglar. Like, if it was two of these and two of those, then I would do BL48, but I don't know if there's not even an L on there. Not even an L on there. Maybe it's G. It's first name. No, that's somebody else. Lortron. The G for the... I don't know. Who knows? Do you know? I don't know. How is this still going? when there's no, when it's frozen. All right, guys, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what your code is. Unless it's cold beans. Uh, let's see, you didn't write anything about... didn't write anything about characters. 
Maybe that's part of the journal still being, uh, still being uh, worked on, as well as the photo system. I know they are doing that. Oh, here we go. Found a pendant with three digits engraved on it. Seven, three, nine. What? That's, that's a little too, a little too coincidental. What was his name? G? No. Um, Bertrand. Seven, three, nine. Oh, ho, ho, ho. The greatest. Oh, movie. No. What a pleasant activity. No. Of course. You'll find the record player only to find the records weeks later in some random box. Shh. Excuse me? Oh. To whoever's reading this, this document contains all the pieces of evidence proving that Hamilton bribed federal authorities as part of his acquisition of that damn mine. That he used henchmen to intimidate members of the local populace is unlikely to get in the attention of Montreal's courthouses. However, if it would so happen that some ministers saw their palms greased up to the hill, it would be certainly another story entirely. What a headline that would make. The English are all the same. We shall prevail. Will he say something about me picking this up? No, because he was talking about that thing. Why are we so slow? Oh, because I was crouched. <laughs> Teach me. Uh, you don't have uh, anything else to say about how cool I am or anything. D dependent. Got crowbar. Got that. Okay. Well, I think we might have gotten what we got out of this place or what we came for. Doors seem to close themselves because spooky ghosts. Um, I should probably head back to the. Uh, I should probably have my car, since there are roads freaking everywhere. Instead of running around like a jackass, freezing my nards off. Right up to a Bigfoot. Get the stuff clawed off. I love the crunching sound of snow. It is one of my favorite sounds. I think I could just listen to it. Oh, God. <laughs> I could just listen to it. Season up out of here. Oh, hello. What are you? Just a box out here? Okay. Cool story. Um, let's see. I don't know what is in my special. I got a magnet. I've got some hardware. Some bullets. Drive, try to find the doctors. Do I know where that is? Does it look different on the map? Um, I'm gonna guess no, it doesn't. Well, what looks good? Um, hmm. There's some places that we came past on the way here. Let's go to the ones we passed getting here. I don't know if that makes any sense. But most of the things I do doesn't make any sense. That's 
the dude's car. Just trying to head out of town. Keep our eye out on the right for some uh, turns. Look inside the mailboxes. Yep, yep, it's cold. But I'm a prat. Wait. This is the place I was at. Hour to go, day. This is not the people's houses I just left. Because <laughs> I went, I went around the general store from the other side. I was thinking, man, I kind of just did the opposite circle to get here, didn't I? I love this ambiance. Let's look at our map while we're driving. Nothing bad could happen. There's a place directly across the road-ish. Yep. You got a truck. Oh, God. Maybe you don't got it. You don't got it. You don't got it. Too icy. Too. Oh god, we're broken. We broke it. No, it, but it was loading, I see. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it has some hard times loading in a new area. That's okay. It's okay, you know, early access. It's alright. I'll forgive you. What's this? Got some cinder blocks. Hello. Spooky ghosts. Radio is the spookiest thing. No. <laughs> you keep trying. And I keep telling you no. What the? Um, weight. My weight is an issue or I could pick up a gas can. Okay, alright. Everything needs needed to clean up a mess. So. Well, let's look at our inventory. I probably don't need six wood. Yeah, let's, let's see if we light a. Let's, let's see if we light up a uh, another wood stove in here. That'll free up some wood space. Carl was no. Oh. He didn't need to resort to petty techniques such as window breaking to find his way in. For Christ's sake, yet another key hidden under a doormat. What do you mean, yet another? Nowadays, I haven't found Carl one under found one. His job didn't present him with much of a challenge. Oh, hello. Lights on. The house smelled like incense. The kind that reminds you of the good Lord, of peace. So turn on the TV. Uh, nope, turn that right off. Probably used to watch Les. Les. Jordi. Je suis le papillon, sir la table. What? Enough food for rough times. Yeah, they were all stocked up on. Well, they are out in the Canadian wilderness. Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Le Babel. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. Well, I've only looked at like four places. Oh, hello, meat. What do I do with meat? Trade it for diamonds, I guess. Diamonds for meat. More pictures. Apparently those don't weigh anything. A sewing kit and a magnet. Apparently that worked. Made something. To have sewn a magnet onto a string. Nobody ever cleans their dishes. And they also won't know that I've been here, because it's not like I left every single thing open. Good Paul Six, appearing able. Yeah. His crooked fingers paper. gave the impression he was about to bestow a miracle. Oh, what were you at your sketching? A nice little house. I'd shake it up if I could grab it. No loose change in the cracks. 
You don't know what's in my crack. There is every piece of loose change. The perfect cookie cutter Catholic family, most likely attending church every Sunday. Good, good for them. That's what they like. I don't care. Hmm. Ooh, diapers. Nobody likes a diaper. The family's mother must have spent her days washing the filth off her kids' diapers. Um. Okay. The empty cradle sent an eerie feeling down Carl's spine. Like, where's the baby? Visible, someone just grabbed the baby and made a run for it. Or maybe the baby grabbed them. Because he was a zombie. Oh. Who knew that giraffes thrived in the North Pole? The craze for toys was stupefying. You're stupefying. You don't have any sense of fun or enjoyment, do you? Mr. Narrator. Clogged bathtub. Really? What it what? is it just hair? Is it Is it a bag of butts? I need to jump in there and find out. What's what's the clog? Love of religion and ancestors was rooted deep inside the hearts of Canadians of old, to which the Bedards appeared to be closely related. Hmm. The Bedards, huh? It's a good name. I like it. Ooh, more children. Gross. Children are the worst. Bingo! Oh, what you got, kid's diary? Surely the Sean Luc Bedard could lead Carl to Hamilton, aka Uncle Willie. Oh, -ho. I have a diary just like mine. Wait, is this a good boy or a girl? Hmm. <laughs> Unlike her, though, I don't wear a long face when writing. I do love to write in my mind. And about Martin, most of all, I love talking about him. I think he loves me too. Wait, what? Is this like a little kid? Is this a little boy? It must be a little girl. Must be like a teenage girl. Just like Romeo and Juliet. People don't like it when I see him, only because he's a bla blase. He's he's so blase. <laughs> if only that was his last name. But just like in the story, nothing can stand in the way of true love. I lost appetite. I can't sleep anymore. Every waking hour, intense shivers run through my body. Thinking about Blase. <laughs> my dad is making me see Dr. Bipru, Bipru, Bipru. <laughs> With his big hands touching me everywhere. What? Gross. His foul breath exhaling all over my face. Yuck. I'm not sick. I'm in love. I love mine so much. There's nothing I like better. And thinking about us playing the doctor together. Ew, but not this doctor. Gross. Like we always do. Mmm. I wonder if he found the key I lost the other day. He was pretty sad when I did because it's for his dad's garden shed. Martin has always been afraid of him. I think Martin's dad is a bit like dad's god. The key fell in a burrow next to the shed. Right up into the donkey's butthole. Weird. Poor Martin. Cried like a baby, but I still love him. The key fell into their pet donkey. Hmm. Interesting. Kids' drawings. How asinine. <laughs> the parents' room where the babies were made. Disgusting. Carl wasn't desperate to the point he felt compelled to break into the secrets of some chubby village lady. Why well, do you know she was chubby? And why would you say such rude things, chubby? Don't you mean just voluptuous, I believe is a word that you could use? Uh, you know, I don't know, seems rude. Chubby. Well, I'm not sure what else we're gonna get out of bound here. We've learned about a, uh, Chubby donkey inside of a burrow. What the hell is a burrow? Is that even these people's house? 
Might be the other person's house. The place with the garden shed, I guess. So it wouldn't be this place. Carl smiled at the sight of the nicely protected garden. Hopefully, the Bidarts had managed to take every last potato out before this other sold off. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so there was a couple things to grab. Maybe the weight limit got lifted. It was a gas can. Which I don't know if we need. And there was, uh, more bottles. A bottle. A bird cage. Well, there is mines here, so I don't know. Maybe it's the old canary into the mine. Need bird cages for that. Did I look at all these. I sure didn't. Found some nails. Oh, let there be light. A true Catholic always strives to keep lowly temptations at bay. Excuse me, I Obviously, want those. Carl thought. Someone in this house wasn't doing a good job at upholding the Holy Bible's teachings. Oh, but I found a stash. He indeed, too small to fit in a door lock. What? What sort of miniature object was it meant for? Probably that lady's diary. Look at those bottles. They have a, uh, a whatchamadoodle on them. Let's hold up. What can we drop? Meat? Can we eat one? Maybe they're for the wolves? Something along that lines? That's not what I wanted to do. Um, special. Maybe that's where all my weight is. Empty bottle. I don't know if I need empty bottles. I'm wired magnet now. Uh, can we drop two wood? Maybe? Discard. We have dropped two wood. What that is. Looks like someone had to hide their habits. Well, obviously it was dad, because... <laughs> Nobody else is in his garage doing stuff. He was not about to pry into some chubby woman's blah 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 as he goes and finds a key that probably fits into her diary. Hello? Don't mind me. Just uh, gonna read your diary. The Bedards had vacated the premises. Carl gathered they would be of no help. John Luke never had a knack for mathematician mathematics. Tries him out even. Never realized that he simply can't be the father of a child I'm bearing. But how can I be sure? Wait, what? Wait. I have to keep this a secret, at least until the time is right. But it'll be safe. What? She's having somebody else's baby. What's going on here? Dr. Bill Pro told me it would start showing soon that I couldn't keep it hidden forever. Got a muster courage, he said, with his usual condescending tone. A courage to face what's coming. But he didn't get it all. For him, I just had some childish affair. Doesn't realize I brought eternal damnation upon myself. Marie is very sick. It gently plunges into despair. I told him nothing about the evil growing inside of me. Evil! Sometimes I get the feeling he can see right through me. My mere suffering and I'm the one to blame. Oh, Lord Almighty. Why do children have to pay for their parents' sins? Wow, she thinks that, uh... Having an affair got her other kids sick. That's, uh... I don't think I agree with that myself, personally. I'm not sure that's how things work in my mind, but... To each their own. What else do we got around here? Nothing? Alright, well, let's, uh... Scoot along to the house down the road. Just want to say uh, hi to those that are, you know, still watching. I'm having fun as weird as this game is. <laughs> and it's pretty weird. Uh, so yeah, we're going out. We're going, uh... Going to the right. That's it. Good. 
good uh, good ambiance in this game. I like the music, the sound, the crunching. Crunching of the snow. Oh god, there's a mailbox. Uh, what does that say? 1556. Is that the town's population? Is that their uh, address? Uh, oh god, like a glove. These guys have a garden shed. We gotta look around for a donkey. Hello, doggy. Doggy. Let's take a little peek around the house. The back door. As we all know, I'm a huge fan of the back door. I don't even know what that means. Oh, no. Oh. It was a classic Canadian house except for the absent horde of kids that would normally be swarming about. You saying all Canadian houses have hordes of kids? I don't know if I agree with that. I don't even know if the front door was unlocked. Well, time to loot everything. Hello. What you got? More matches. Typical Canadian hat. Der, 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 der. The only thing missing was a whole bunch of kids killing themselves. What? Le Phantasm. He pondered using a what? Matthew had yet to add murder to his curriculum. He was fond of new experiences, especially the most thrilling ones and taking the life of flesh and bone individual who the night before was still able to think, dream, fantasize, calculate, and read held the promise of exhilarating sensations. Unlike Rascal Jing, it was about accident an old Jewish hag to pieces to test some lunatic theory. Hmm. Not at all, Matthew just wanted to know how it felt. It seemed so simple, horribly simple. He didn't have any particular victim in mind. Like most people, his desires ran quite wildly, so he only had a vague idea of them in mind. He pondered using a rifle or a knife, assassinating a young girl or an old man. He, he tried to focus on practical practicability. <laughs> I like that word, practicability. His victim would have to be defenseless. Bodybuilding wasn't exactly Matthew's, Matteo's strong suit. He would have to act spontaneously, but not too much. He wasn't that eager to learn what spending the life and rest of his life in prison would be like. Some experience carried just too high a cost to be worth it, really. Wow, the fantasy page one. That sounds like a sounds like a really good. Just one more nail for the lightest checkmate. It game over. It seems the game was abandoned right before the final strike came down. Okay. Well, checkmate, I guess. Don't kill me. They still had stuff in the stove. That storm sounds... really legit. Eh! I couldn't. Now! There's never gonna be anything up in these cupboards, are there? God damn it! What? Cookie jars are always too high to reach. That's. That's true. There you go. And there was nothing in there. For all my troubles. I want those cookies. Ice cold cola. The couple radiated something akin to lightheartedness, to freedom. Yeah, it reads Perhaps about some people out there truly found a way to live happily. The ever worst after. murders ever. A picture of Wilfred in his youth. Carl figured right away that the man must have been some kind of wildlife officer. The photograph was snapped not too far from here, Carl noticed. The couple seemed to be very good friends. 
Hmm. What is this? Medicine? I'll put that in my butt. Because, you know, you gotta. Excuse me? I thought it said cat. Cat on. And I was like, that's. Come on now. feel like a, like a bad man just coming into these people's places. You know, is this the fantasy number two? Nope, page four, can't read it yet. Gotta find page two. No, oh, it's, uh, it's page three. Number. Don't read it, guys. One out fabric. <laughs> this has got to be page two, right? God, what is with these people in their clothes? Ooh, Canopoly. I <laughs> see what you guys did there. Because it's the name of the... <laughs> uh oh. <sighs> More cigarettes. Man, everybody in this town smokes. Alright. Fantasy page two. It was around that time that Mateo met Beatrice. A mediocre beauty at best. Girl with her distinctive features, cheeks covered with large pock like freckles, Jew nose, because of, of course, that's how you gotta say it, oily forehead, tired but vibrant eyes, shaded red hair, slender as a child's body. Ew, wait, what? Slender as a child body? That's weird. Chirpy laugh. You name it, it was the very image of innocence. That happened to be precisely the kind of victim Matteo was. Matteo? I don't know. Matthew. Mateo was picturing in his mind, though. One night as he was contemplating the ceiling from his bed, he swore to himself again and again, I'll kill her. His dreams were later filled with images of the imminent crime. He'd come up with a single, simple enough plan. One fine evening, he would visit her place to become familiar with the area's intricacies and feel closer to the impending murder. To slowly dig into Beatrice's thoughts, desires, dreams, and abilities, she had bow hunting abilities. She had <laughs> race car driving abilities. She had like four points into strength. I don't know. For some reason, somebody says, what are your abilities? Uh, I can, I can jerk it real hard. I don't know. This way, you'd be able to get a concrete sense of what a sinister deed would be stripping away from the very fabric of life. The whole thing would take two days weak at most. Oh my god. Who is, A, who's reading this and leaving pieces all over the house? Joe Dirt. Joe the Saint. Joe the Sin. Right, page three. First time he met Beatrice, however, she unexpectedly revealed her troubled origins to Matteo. She was adopted at the age of four, and recalling her former life still gave her a hard time. She played the piano in so graceful a manner that people often thought she may be the natural offspring of a musical virtuoso. She always cried before falling asleep, torn from the inside by a dreadful pain she couldn't explain. She confided in him so profoundly that Matteo couldn't get enough coming back every night to learn every single thing of what would come out of that delicate mouth after pulling one last breath out of it. Every night he reflected on what the death of Beatrice would mean in terms of losses to humanity's common heritage, be it the sound of her sobbing or the piano melodies, the composing, compulsive tapping of her long index finger on her temple when she harbored dark thoughts or any other little thing. It didn't matter. Everything would indiscriminately vanish. Everything. All these thoughts made for some blissful slumbers indeed. Then days became weeks, and before he knew it, it was Matthew's turn to throw his secrets at her. His hopes, his cries of despair, as of throwing coins in a wishing well. She'll be dead by the end of the month, he promised himself. Shit. Psycho. A murderer's diary. Carl's detective training compelled him to write some excerpts down. 
What sort of monster could give life to such a bizarre tale? I don't know. Let's finish it. The two love birds were still going at it seven months later, though. That's a long time to have sex. I mean, in one session, if you're still going at it seven months later, you're probably dead. Though confiding fears and desires, alike near the fireplace several days a week. The populace took notice, and wounding words eventually found their way to Matteo's ear, prompting him to take action to prove his gentlemanship. He had to ask Beatrice's hand in marriage. He would have more than enough time to kill her later. Oh my god, that's the people who live here. Today, when Matteo stares at the motionless ceiling, just like he did 20 years ago, he still wonders what he would be removing from existence by slitting Beatrice's throat, what he would be depriving his children of. Then, as if soothed by his fantasy, he gently drifts off, smiling the night away. I am in the house of a mass psycho man. Psychomantis. Five more bullets, whoa. Not a single rifle left. That had to be a bad sign, Carl surmised. You think? If I turn around and he's just waiting to murder me, oh, Beatrice, you... You are a lucky slash unlucky lady. The couple radiated something. <laughs> it means something totally different now, doesn't Perhaps it? Perhaps some people out there truly found a way to live happily ever after. What the f... That's not creepy as hell. All right, well, that's a that was a fun little story house. Simone de Beauvoir, Claude Levi Strauss, Hannah Arendt, Roland Barthes. Carl was surprised by the literature filling this liberal-leaning bookcase. Could there really be intellectuals dwelling in this far-off land? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of an asshole is Carl? Wow, I thought only stupid people lived up in Canada. Whoa, look at me, I'm Carl, and I'm a, just a racist son of a bitch. Freaking Carl. Who knew that intellectuals... <laughs> Who knew that people could like books? <laughs> what a scumbag. Just dig around in their trash, take that bottle. Yeah. Well, not, in a way, not really sad that those people are, well, they had kids, I guess they didn't do anything, you know, people harbor thoughts, but his went a little far, I think. <laughs> Everybody at one point in their life thinks about murdering somebody. She ate my sandwich! I will. 